Today's episode is called Low AMA Chapter 35, Why Pregnancy Success Comes from Addressing the Underlying Imbalances with Our Health. So if your AMH is low, you're over 35, and you've had a failed IVF cycle, or been told that IVF is your only option, this episode will give you clarity on what actually matters. AMH tells you something, but it doesn't give you the full story. Excited for you to listen, let's go. Welcome back, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile. For over a decade, my team and I have helped hundreds of couples improve their chances of pregnancy success, whether naturally or through IVF. We specialize in helping those with low AMH, high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency, and recurrent pregnancy loss using functional lab testing and personalized fertility strategies. By the end of this episode, you'll know the four underlying patterns that predict pregnancy far more reliably than AMH, especially for women over 35 who haven't had success with IVF. Thanks for being here. Make sure you hit subscribe or follow. And if you know someone else who's on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. We're talking about AMH. I feel like I bang on about this a lot. But really, AMH is the ovarian reserve, but not the capability. And so yes, low AMH, there's fewer follicles, but doesn't mean that pregnancy is not possible. So it doesn't predict your ache potential. AMH can go up and down and pregnancy can still happen. So it's a poor predictor of live birth outcomes. We're looking at the environment for the eggs, not hanging our hat on the AMH. And so you're not trying to make 12 eggs respond, you're trying to develop one good ache. <laughs> and so it only takes one. Why IVF fails for many women with low AMH, we work with a lot of type A professional women, a lot of stress, and they've typically been told that they have low AMH, but no one's dug deeper with their health. No one's looking at all your biomarkers. And you're told that IVF is your only option. IVF does not work when we haven't addressed all these different biomarkers. Obviously for some people it can, but if you're dealing with low AMH, diminished ovarian reserve, and you've gone through failed IVFs, it's not about you saving all your money for IVF, thinking that's your only option without doing a deep dive in a targeted manner using testing. So as part of our fab fertile method, we have access to testing. We ship it worldwide, North America, Europe, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, to be able to figure out what exactly is going on with your health. So IVF does not work when you've got high inflammation. We see that high sensitivity C-reactive protein. We want it below one. We see it elevated a lot. Digestion. If you've got known digestive issues, I have people tell me, lifelong constipation, I've got IBS, bloating, burping, diarrhea, that is a clue. If you've got digestive issues, you can still have food sensitivities and gut microbiome issues without known digestive issues, but if you have digestive issues, you know for sure something's being missed. If you've got colds and flus and you were dragging your butt, someone sneezes on you, next thing you know, you're in bed for a while, is your immune system down? I have a whole guide called the immune system and how it relates with fertility. And so being able to boost up your immune system, send me a message at hello at fabfertile.ca subject line immune, and I will send you that guide. There's specific things we can do to really get that, that improving. It's not, I've got these colds and flus, cracked lips, mineral deficiencies, all this stuff and we rush off to IVF. Minerals are depleted. Maybe you've got little white specks on your nails from from zinc deficiency or cracked lips, or you've got known low vitamin D and you're supplementing, but why is it low? Your mitochondria are stressed. So the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells. If all the stress and the toxins that are coming in, that can be impacting the quality of your eggs. Your your nervous system is overloaded. IVF's not gonna look at that. If you feel impatient and frustrated and panicked and worried and anxious, all these are normal. We need to be able to give voice to what's happening with this, be able to calm our nervous system. Because if our nervous system doesn't feel safe, it feels panicked and worried because the REI just told you your AMH is so low, it's falling off a cliff. That's not conducive to bringing in your child. We need to feel calm. We need to focus on our intuition, our spirit baby waiting for us, our faith in God, the universe, whatever works for you to bring in some peace and some deep knowing. And that's what brings the calmness to you. And then you can be able to start making some of these changes. And if you've got poor sleep, you may have insomnia, you wake up in the middle of the night, go in a bathroom multiple times, the early morning, you could be waking up. All these things are common, but again, not normal and not looked at if IVF is not working. Those are huge clues. All of them impact your egg development. And so we're not 
anti-IVF or pro-health. There's things we need to be able to do. So we need to be able to have consistent ovulation. It's not going to look at your anovulatory cycles, your weak ovulation, your short luteal phases, your inconsistent temperatures, your variable cervical fluid. So they may have noted some of that, perhaps, if you're tracking it, but they're pushing this with medication. So you can't develop a good egg in an unstable hormonal rhythm. If you've got a high inflammatory load, maybe you don't even know you're inflamed, but you're dealing with some skin issues, hives, acne, you've got psoriasis, dermatitis, eczema, hives, any kind of issues going on with the skin. You have got digestive issues, burping, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. You've got a known autoimmune issue. Hashimoto's and celiac are ones that we see a lot, but we see all kinds of other autoimmune issues with a low AMH. You're just getting a lot of colds and flu, so chronic mucus inflammation in the body. Those are some, the bloating, the joint pain. You shouldn't be like waking up and feeling like all your joints hurt. If you're feeling irritable, you've got ADHD, you've got brain fog. If you're having any kind of joint issues, skin issues, digestive issues, autoimmune, mood issues, those are clues. What is happening with inflammation in your body and being able to address that in a targeted manner. So this can be a major reason that IVF fails because we're not looking at the inflammatory issues and that can impact your hormone signaling and follicle development. Mitochondrial capacity. So the eggs rely on ATP or energy and signs your mitochondria are struggling. You're tired. The afternoon crash. You got cracked lips. You used to have that all the time. So cracked lips are nu nutrient deficiencies, mineral deficiencies. Slow recovery from stress. Everything has just got you wound up. Exercise intolerance. When you do it, you're exhausted the next day. So you can't supplement your way out of mitochondrial depletion. You've got to rebuild the conditions and support the energy production, which is the health of your eggs. Good news, there's things that we can do along with this. Another one we see is the stress physiology or the circadian health. So this is a pattern we see in high achieving women. And we typically will underestimate that. So that wired but tired, we keep going. Trouble falling asleep because we're just agitated or anxious, waking up feeling exhausted, heart palpitations, irritability, reliance on caffeine, where we gotta have the caffeine to get ourselves going in the morning, multiple cups. Those are some signs that your adrenals, our whole thesis on this, is it actually early menopause or is it the adrenals that impact the thyroid, impacts the AMH and the FSH and the follicle count. It could be chronic stress you're dealing with. And that's gonna impact your ovulation strength, your progesterone, your immune balance. Once you start to work on your health, so before conception, we typically see regular cycles. Our goal is to help regulate your cycle. It should come and be a non-event. Cramps, irregularities, short cycles, all these short luteal phase, all this stuff is a clue. And so we need to be able to work on your cycle. With these health issues, we see cycle improve, improvements. We see people improving their cycle and getting a cycle back in the 40s that's been gone for years. We see improved cervical fluid. We use trackers such as Anido or Mira, along with the basal body temperature and your cervical mucus. We see better sleep. The digestion improves. We see this all the time with our clients. So energy, digestion, sleep, mood, they come into the program. Sometimes they're just blowing up our chat because you're feeling so agitated and you're trying to figure this out and the pressure of all this is exhausting. So we're here to take the pressure off you, to be able to answer those questions and help calm down the nervous system, get in with our mindset coach and be able to really visualize a positive path forward. You and your partner are on the same page here, just feeling really calm and hopeful about this because sometimes we can just feel in such a dark place and we need to honor where we've been, honor our path and grant ourselves some grace and be kind to ourselves. Especially if you're type A, we just keep going. I'm totally fine. Don't worry about me. I got to worry about everyone else. We need to show ourselves some compassion and sometimes we could have compassion fatigue. People maybe have it for us because we've been on this fertility journey for years. We have it for ourselves. We're sick. Are you kidding? Another month of this? We keep going and keep going, right? And so we'd be able to nourish our body, calm the nervous system down, and grant ourselves some grace. And we're looking at our blood sugar. It's not on this roller coaster where you're irritable and your blood sugar's crashing. That's when it improves pregnancy success. Consistent energy. We're just feeling good throughout the day. And a calmer nervous system. Not this sense of panic. We can really hear our intuition. We can hear our faith. We're really leaning into that. 
And that's what tells us the ovarian environment is changing. So we've helped many people with low AMH and high FSH go on to conceive naturally, or if they do go to IVF, going on to improve their chances of pregnancy success. So if you wanted to book a call, you can send me a message at hello at fabfertile dot ca subject line fertile and i will give you some options to help if this episode resonated with you check out next week's episode where we're going to go deeper into poor a quality five patterns we see in women who still can get pregnant when this episode is live i will link it here for you take care